So in the last class, we have started our discussion on a new topic in compiler design and that is called as semantic analysis. So by semantic analysis, what we have studied is that we uh, we put some attributes in a AST which is obtained from a syntax analyzer or parser and create what we call as a decorated AST by evaluating those attributes okay so and performing some semantic checks so basically semantic analysis means creation of a decorated AST from a uh, raw AST by attaching a set of attributes on every node of the AST and evaluating those attributes okay uh, by traversing the AST okay we have also seen what we mean by an attribute in a semantic checker and we have seen that the attributes can be classified as so let me so the attributes can be classified as uh, this thing that is synthesized attribute and another is called uh, inherited attributes so uh, just a second so uh, just a second yeah so attributes can be categorized in a semantic analysis based on or uh, how I evaluate that attribute value so if I uh, so one is called as inherited attributes where the a given node obtain the value of the attribute by eval by by using the attribute values of its parent and sibling okay similarly there is uh, another kind of attribute called as synthesized attribute where we try to uh, evaluate the where where an attribute of a given node is evaluated by using the attributes of its children okay of its children so basically uh, so so to evaluate these attributes in each node of an AST we perform some graph traversal or a tree traversal in the AST okay and uh, while traversing and evaluating those rules we try to verify that the semantic rules of the given programming language is respected okay now let us try to see today what are the various kinds of semantic rules that that are possible in a given programming language okay so let me give you a small example and you have to tell me that whether it is a uh, it, whether it is a error or it is a correct construct Okay, so suppose I write 1 int x and x is equal to 2. So, so is it a, uh, is, is this construct, is this two statements correct or not? And if they are not correct, then what kind of error it is? Okay, this is the first thing. Second is, Second is suppose I have a block statement where I have int a and a is equal to 1 then outside this block I am using again a is equal to 2 okay so this is the second so you have to tell me whether it is erroneous or not thirdly there is another thing like int a and a is equal to 1.0 suppose so let us try to see these three scenarios what are these uh, whether all these scenarios are correct or they are incorrect if they are incorrect then by what rule and why they are incorrect first of all 1 int x is it violates the grammar of the given language 
that means while creating the AST it will be caught as a syntax error okay so it will be caught as a syntax error second is this thing so I am using a variable a beyond the scope where it is declared okay so it is basically the semantic rule of a given language okay it is a semantic error similarly int a and a is equal to 1.0 is an error that means the LHS and the RHS of the assignment are of different types okay so so basically so so it is again a semantic error so if in the exam question comes that uh, give me certain rules semantic rules that defines a given programming language then what we can say so so let us try to write some rules so semantic rules that we check in the semantic analysis in a for a given programming language Okay, so let me write it in a way. So the first rule I will say a variable must be defined before it is used. This is the first rule. We cannot use a variable in a program in a language for if it is not defined. Second is a variable should not be defined more than once in a given language in a given scope understood so in a given scope i cannot define int a is equal to 2 then again we declare another uh, the same uh, another variable with the same name that is int a is equal to 3 okay so that is that is not allowed okay it is against the semantics of the c program similarly in an assignment statement the left hand side and the right hand side expression should be of same type also otherwise it's a semantic error fourthly suppose i say in a if condition if statement the if condition should be of type boolean okay in C++ there is a uh, there is a type called bool and and hence uh, in a if statement in C++ the expression has to be of type boolean okay so uh, so so these are some of the semantic rules to check in a given programming language now from this uh, we can see that we can say that uh, the semantic checks can be broadly categorized into two parts okay so one is called what we call as an uh, scope Best rules. Semantic rules. So this means what? So any variable declare means a uh, scope resolution rules you can say. So here the first and the second belongs to the scope based semantic rules. Okay. And another is called rules regarding type checking. Okay, and uh, and uh, it is called as type checking. 
so in every statement we try to check the type for a given expression okay and hence 3 and 4 belongs to the second category of semantic checks it is called as type checks okay so so basically we will study in this uh, chapter the two kinds of how we perform two kinds of semantic checks how we design our data structure to store these attribute values and all those things okay so to start with so let us start with scope resolution so today we will just start it then we will continue in the next class so scope resolution is basically performed by a data structure called as symbol table okay so what what does this mean this means it is basically a table of symbols okay and each symbol carries some information for a given variable declaration okay suppose i say suppose i have a function declaration okay so so int so i say that extern int okay my func int int okay int a int b so here my func is a symbol a is another symbol and b is another symbol so while keeping information in a symbol table we we first create a class called as symbol table entry that defines what should be my what should be the structure of the information that I am storing for a particular symbol okay so symbol table entry will have so if if it is a class then what what are its members so its members will be first symbol name symbol type second <coughs> then uh, what else symbol name symbol type whether it is some attributes like whether it is a con uh, so what is the scope okay so for example here it will be my func symbol symbol type is a function declaration then scope is is extern 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 scope then i have uh, int is means type basically defined for a function what are its argument types and what is the return type so i can say that int comma int is the argument and the return type is int so basically this creates a signature for a given function so in this way i am just uh, telling you uh, in a rough way that for every variable we declare in a given programming language we 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 treat its name as a symbol and we try to create a symbol table entry by st for storing some extra information related to the variable declaration okay so in scope resolution we store these things and also we try to find out what is the scope of the given variable okay and that thing is maintained by creating an hierarchy of scopes hierarchy tree of scopes okay we'll discuss this in, in the next class